Oh, that's so late. Christo friends, welcome to Opus L and I, where we are finally back to the medieval period. A friend of mine was recently drooling over a beaded veil in someone else's kit, and since I love any opportunity to elevate an outfit, I offered to make one for her. You may remember that about a year ago, I made a linen veil as part of a subscriber milestone giveaway. Unadorned veils are practical and adaptable, making them an essential part of any feminine medieval wardrobe. For special occasions though, there's nothing quite like a beaded silk veil. Decorated veils have been worn since the 13th century, and there's a lot of evidence for them in manuscripts, painting, and even statuary. Beading, embroidery, and frothy goffers or ruffles have all been used throughout the years to embellish veils. Beaded veils were especially popular in the 1400s in Italy, and we have many paintings that show people wearing fine silk veils with beaded edges. Everyone, go grab your cuppa. Today, I am drinking the Adventurer's Club Tea of the Month for July from Tabletop Tea, 11 Z's. Like Second Breakfast, it's a Tolkien-themed black tea blend, but it is lighter with some delightful citrus notes in there. Let's get into it. I knew I had some lightweight silk fabric, so I dug through my stash until I found this delightfully floaty silk chiffon and gave it a nice pressing. Chiffon is amazing in terms of drape and float, but those very qualities can make it difficult to work with. The fabric tends to get all squidgy, yes, that is a technical term, and not want to stay on grain during cutting. If you find you're having difficulties with this, I recommend starching your chiffon in order to make it behave better. Just make sure that everything is nice and square before you starch it or else you'll still be cutting patterns out off grain. This piece was small enough that I could wrangle it fairly easily. I'm marking off the width of the veil by making dots at my measurements. I don't want to draw an actual line because I'm afraid that will drag the fabric out of true. Once the veil is the dimensions I want, this will be an oval veil, I will fold the silk into quarters and then eighths diagonally and round the corners off, using the same dot technique as before. I'm sorry this footage is so blurry, I'm not sure what was going on here with my camera. I'll be using Ethna's magic veil stitch to roll the hems here like I did with my linen veils. For thread, I'm just using Guterman's silk thread and waxing it for strength and to keep it from tangling. The chiffon is slippery enough that I ironed in the edge by about half a centimeter or a quarter inch to serve as the first fold in the magic stitch.
thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members, especially my newest members, Kieran, Tiny Shiny Crumb, and Elizabeth. Your support and the support of all my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see the beading. My friend requested beads in her Baronese colors, white or silver, black, and gold. I've also figured out the ideal width of the loop for the number of beads and marked the width on my finger with Sharpie. That way I'll be able to make sure that all of the loops match. The bead loops consist of three to four silver seed beads, a black one, a gold, and then another black and three to four silver. I've decided to also use graduated sizes of beads for more visual interest. So the silver are size 11, the black are size 8, and the gold is size 6. I'm also making two knots in between each loop so that if something happens to break the thread, hopefully only that loop will lose its beads.
thank you to all of my croissants for joining me today. I can't wait to hand over this lovely veil to its new owner, Kofina, along with her matching pins. I will be sure to get some pictures of her when I do, and I will post them on Instagram and my coffee page. I wanted to take a quick second to thank everyone who joined my Discord server, which launched on July 1st. Not gonna lie, I was overwhelmed by the response. We had over 100 people before the weekend was even over. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I really look forward to seeing how our community grows. If you're a coffee member, make sure to link your coffee and Discord accounts to be able to access the member-only boards for your tier. We have a lot of fun things happening, like a low-key summer sew-along and the Crystal Cave Book Club, which will be launching August 1st. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell on the off chance that YouTube is sending out notifications this month. If you're interested in finding me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and all of those links will be in the description box. I'll also post the link to my coffee where you can leave a one-time tip, look through my web shop, or become a member for additional content and a personal thank you in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Well, what are you doing, Goober?